Hello everyone. Today I've got three more amazing indie horror books for you to read. And as I've always said, man, uh, when it comes to horror, you don't have to limit yourself to two or three big name authors. You know, there, there's a lot of great authors and there's nothing wrong with those authors. I love Stephen King, all right? I love Clyde Barker just as much as anybody else. But when you delve into the indie horror world, there are so many great books out there, so much uh, almost undiscovered talent. And when I get to read something by these authors that you may, may or may not have heard of, or books that you may or may not have heard of, uh, and they wind up being this good, I get really excited. <laughs> so that's why I love doing what I do, and I like to bring them to you. And as a reminder, I want to let you know that I have horror books for sale for a dollar each uh, in the description. You can join my Patreon. Uh, that link is also in the description. And if you want to get your Horror Is My Happy Place merch, t-shirts, sweatshirts, and coffee mugs, that link is in the description as well. It all helps support the channel, and I appreciate it. All right, let's get started. All right, so the first book I want to talk about today is called The House That Horror Built. Uh, this is a great book. Uh, gothic, slow-burning, creepy novel uh, that just gets under your skin the more you read, you know, as secrets are unveiled and everything. Uh, think of something like, you know, uh, 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 the, the House on ha or the, the Haunting on Hill House, or House on Haunted Hill, that's what I'm trying to say. Or something uh, Shirley Jackson-esque. Something like that. It's a great gothic novel. Uh, and it's about, a, it's set in modern day Chicago, and there's a single mom, she has a 14 year old son, they have a very good relationship, but they are very poor. Uh, she ran away from her home when she was younger, and you'll, you'll find out why as you read. Uh, and she's basically been on her own ever since, when the father of the child wanted nothing to do with it before, uh, before he was even born. But now she lives in Chicago, this book is set uh, post-pandemic, and uh, she's having a hard time finding a job. She doesn't have an education. She doesn't really have any skills. Uh, so she'll take anything she can get because uh, she finds out they have to leave their apartment. The landlord's tearing down the building or selling the building, I should say. And they have to leave, but they have no money for a deposit. Don't know what they're going to do. And she does not want her son to experience the homelessness that she experienced when she ran away from her home. So it's a very... Uh, a volatile situation for her. But she takes a job at this big, creepy, gothic uh, house of a man uh, that not many people know lives in Chicago. And he is a movie director, a very popular, very well-known horror movie director. As a matter of fact, five years earlier, he won an Academy Award for one of his films. But he moved from California out of the public spotlight, living as a recluse in this home, after his wife and son left and nobody has no idea where they are. They like disappeared off the face of the earth. After his son, his teenage son was accused of murder, they took off and he says, I have nothing to do with it. I don't know where they are. He, he seems to be very heartbroken <clears throat> about this. He seems to really miss his wife and his son a great deal. So he lives as a recluse, never leaving his home uh, there in Chicago. And she takes a job cleaning for him three days a week. Inside of his house, it's almost like a museum. He has all these props and all these statues and all these latex creatures of, of, of uh, things, not only from his movies, but other movies as well. They're big, you know, cinephile. And uh, <clears throat> they have a good relationship, employee, employer, but they don't really get personal. There's no friendship there or anything. But she experiences strange things in the house sometimes, knocking on walls, and sometimes she thinks she hears the voice that says, help me, help me, coming from a locked room at the end of the hall that she's not allowed to go into, right? Really creepy stuff. But she attributes it to the fact that her and her son love horror movies and uh, all the stress she's under because of her money situation and having to move and everything. So she can't really believe that what she is hearing and some things she's seen with statues moving and and some of those uh, horrifying, monstrous props kind of staring at her and maybe reaching out to her. She, she doesn't know if all that is real. But one day out of the blue, the director invites her and her son over for a Friday night dinner, which she finds strange, but she decides to go. And her, or, or the director and her son seem to hit it off like gangbusters. Like they are tight, they are close. She kind of feels like a third wheel sometimes because it's obvious 
to her that the director has uh, a certain bond with her son. But over time, as they get closer and closer, she begins to get a little jealous because it seems like the director's trying to pull the son away from her a little bit. It could be her imagination because she does overthink a lot of things, but she doesn't think it is. But, uh, and then other people are going to start experiencing some of the things she has with very horrifying uh, consequences. <laughs> Let's put it that way. That's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, but this is a fantastic book. Uh, you know, you got this horror director as a re recluse in this, in this old mansion, and you got uh, uh, somebody dies inside there at one point, and you, ha you just have so much here going on. But like I said, it's a very gothic, very creepy, very slow burn kind of uh, horror novel, uh, but it absolutely pays off at the end. I always say I don't mind a slow burn as long as the payoff is good, and this one is fantastic. I absolutely uh, loved it. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend this one, and there is a link down below where you can pick up your copy in the description. And next we have Midnight Mother. Ooh, I want to thank the author for sending me a copy of this book, uh, copy of the ARC. It's coming out on July 5th. So like, uh, what, from the time I'm making this video, about five, six days, something like that. Uh, very, very soon. And there is a pre-order link that I encourage you to get your copy uh, in the description. Uh, this one is great. This is about <coughs> um, two siblings, a sister and a brother. And when they were young, their other brother their elder brother was kind of the glue that put them all together. Uh, and he died in a horrific accident. There was a reason for that, which you're going to read about later, but I don't want to give that away. But he died. And uh, they've experienced uh, trauma in their past. Uh, their mother was basically, they believe, or at least the daughter believes, our main protagonist there, the daughter, that she was possessed by evil because every night their mother would change and she would run around the house screaming, sometimes in different languages, uh, chairs being stacked on tables, uh, uh, weird, unexplainable things would happen while their mother sat there screaming through the house, trying to chase them down to kill her own children. And this went on every night to the point where they have a special closet with a key that they would go into as children every night listening to their mother outside, pounding on the door, threatening to kill them, telling them that she's going to break through and kill them. And uh, in the morning, after she calmed down and she became herself again, they would slide the key out from under the door, their mother would unlock the door, and things would kind of go back to normal. But uh, one night, the police happened to show up. They were not expecting what they found, but yeah, they eventually, uh, and, and this book will tell you how, but I'm not going to tell you. But eventually they arrested the mother and they put her in a psychiatric hospital. Uh, an aunt took the oldest son, but refused to take our protagonist, the daughter, so she got sent to foster home. And they've been in a strange, estranged family ever since having no communication hardly with each other because, because they're all traumatized, but they're all dealing with it in very different ways. Until one day she gets a call from her brother saying that their mother has died. And he and her need to go back to their home and take care of the, all the details that entail that kind of thing. And uh, she does not want to, but reluctantly agrees. Uh, but when they go back, they're going to find out some family secrets, some very dark family secrets because nobody else thinks the mother was possessed. They just think she was mentally ill. And throughout this book, it's for the most part, we don't really know if it was just a mental illness because there are some parts where you might think, yeah, that sounds exactly like a mental illness, but then other parts uh, kind of might give away the fact that something much more malevolent was going on. And uh, this one builds and builds and builds the tension until you, you almost can't stand it. And we are going to find out some things about that family uh, as we delve into their past, uh, especially about a mine they own on their property in the back. And that's going to play a big part in this. And it's just fantastic. I mean, uh, the, the pacing is dead on. You're going to love this character and this family. Uh, 
everything just works on, uh, on a great level, especially for like, I believe this is the first uh, novel from this author or maybe, maybe the second, but it, it's just fantastic. I absolutely loved it. It's coming out on July 5th, I believe. And like I said, there is a pre-order link in the description and I highly recommend it. And next we have The Visitor. Uh, yes, this is from Kevin Bacher. Uh, I've reviewed his three anthologies, all three of them, uh, before uh, elsewhere on my channel. You can look for them in the, in the video descriptions down there. But uh, this is his first novel that he's ever written. And uh, this one is so good. Uh, it, it has a dog, a very, a very sweet, nice, protective dog. So, you, you know, you got to love that. But that also brings an extra element of terror because, you know, something's lurking in those woods. And it concerns a woman who is going out to her uh, cabin. Uh, and her boyfriend is going to meet her there later. And it's set in the woods, in this cabin, during the middle of a blizzard. So you got to love that. But something else is out there with her. Something n perhaps not of this world. Something that resembles, like, uh, imagine a human-sized combination of... Uh, cockroach and praying mantis with mandibles that want to eat through human flesh and pincers on the end of its legs that want to rip and tear your, your, your body apart. Think about something like that. Uh, and uh, there's no communication in that cabin. And uh, pretty soon her and her dog find themselves trapped while her boyfriend is on the way, but they can't communicate with each other. She wants to tell him not to show up. Uh, but she, basically her and a dog have to fight these creatures alone because once they smell that blood, once they sense that something else is there, uh, they are not going to relent until they get their meal. Let me put it that way. And so this book is full of action and full of terror and full of tension. I really, really loved it. But the thing that really amazes me is that in her past, she was sexually abused uh, by her father for a long time. And this book deals with that in length during this kind of alien creature invasion kind of angle. But it deals with it in a very realistic way. And this is also about uh, uh, getting rid of past trauma and finding ways to overcome it and becoming your own person again and taking charge of your own life. And she discovers she has all that within her. Uh, but unfortunately, she has to put that to the test in the face of these horrifying circumstances she's encountering. And of course, like I said, whenever you put a dog in the middle of things in, in grave danger, you never know whether the, you never know whether the dog's going to make it or not <laughs> in a horror book, you know. And, uh, and so that adds an extra layer of uh, uh, terror right there, at, le at least for me. Uh, but you're going to have to read to find out exactly what happens to her and the dog and her boyfriend uh, or these... Uh, horrifying creatures that uh, may not be of this world and where did they come from and what did they actually want and uh, can they even do anything about it because they're basically defenseless up there locked inside this cabin in the middle of the woods during a blizzard you know yeah this one was absolutely great again I want to thank the author for sending me an ARC it's coming out next month and there is a pre-order link where you can pick up your copy in the description and I highly, highly recommend it. And as always, I want to say thank you for taking some of your time and spending it here with me. And until we meet again, keep reading spooky, my friends.